getting getting familiar with this. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, great to be here at the first or fourth Hive Fest, however you look at it. Um, I'm sure that most of you are familiar with Splinterlands. Um, if you're not, I would encourage you to go to splinterlands.com and check it out. It is a blockchain-based collectible card game built and run on the Hive blockchain. Um, but today, since I, I figure you guys are mostly familiar with the game, I was going to talk more specifically about um, how we have integrated with the high blockchain and some of the challenges that we've had just, you know, in the in the crypto and blockchain space. And then how Hive has helped us create a, a much better, you know, user experience than other blockchain platforms and also some of the, you know, some of the issues and how we've worked around them. Um, I'm going to try to keep this somewhat short because we don't have a lot of time, but I will be available here and, you know, Discord for questions whenever. So um, first and foremost, the biggest problem uh, in general with crypto and Hive uh, is onboarding. So this is a problem we've been, you know, working on for a long time, and I think we have a pretty, pretty good solution worked out at this point. Um, so right now on Splinterlands, if a new player comes in, they can just enter their email address and either create a password um, or choose one of these various login options. So there's Wax, um, which is another blockchain platform, Wombat, which is an EOS wallet, MetaMask, I'm sure you're all familiar with for Ethereum, and Arcane is one we've integrated recently that allows you to log in with like Twitter and Facebook and, and those type of social logins. So the idea is that for, um, for onboarding, you, you know, people can just sign up like they would any other website. They don't have to deal with keys um or any any blockchain or cryptocurrency stuff which which is really really important and has helped us immensely with with getting new people on board who aren't familiar with crypto um so what happens um when you log in with an email address or one of those services is that we actually create um like a fake account for you so you could see in this example it's initiate underscore four zero three two and you might notice that underscore is not a valid uh, character for a Hive account name. So at this point, we haven't actually created a Hive account for them, um, but we still let them play and interact in the game. And since the game is based on the Hive blockchain, everything in everything that happens in the game, every time someone plays or transfers a card or does anything, it needs to have a transaction on the Hive blockchain. So what we've done is when we give people these kind of fake accounts, that aren't Hive blockchain accounts is we actually allow them to submit transactions uh, via an API call from accounts that we have. So Splinterlands has a bunch of accounts like SL Proxy One, SL Proxy Two, etc. And when someone who doesn't have a Hive account is playing the game, these proxy accounts will actually send the transactions on their behalf. Um, and we think that's a really great way um, and something we hope to see a lot of other apps using to onboard people and let them try out everything um, without just having to make an account for everyone, which, you know, that, that has a cost and, um, you know, people can take advantage of it. So it's a great way to like have sort of a light account type of type of solution where people can try out the app and, you know, see if they're interested before making a, a full account. Um, so I'm sure you might, you probably can't read this here, but it says, once you have unlocked the summoner spellbook, you'll be able to choose your own unique name, create your blockchain wallet and start earning valuable rewards. So once, if someone comes in and they're playing and they're enjoying it and they're having a good time, um, they can purchase the Summoner Spellbook, which we sell for $10. And in addition to unlocking a whole bunch of stuff in the game, um, it also allows you to create your actual Hive blockchain wallet. Um, and then you can request your keys with the purple button here and uh, and then get full access to everything. Um, now, one one key thing about your keys, key thing about your keys, is that uh, Splinterlands will, you know, since we create the account, we will have your keys and we do save them for you. Um, that's really, again, really important to us from a user experience perspective because uh, we we just can't afford, you know, we can't afford to, to tell people, oh, you've lost your keys. Well, we're sorry, you've, you know, lost access to everything that you've paid for. Um, that's just not the user experience that we're going for. So we save people's keys on a separate, highly encrypted database. Um, and that way, if they lose them, they can prove they're the owner of the account by various ways and we can recover it for them, which is, again, something we think that's really, really important for, for any blockchain-based project trying to onboard users. Um, 
but on one of the great things about Hive is that for people who are more security conscious, conscious and they don't want us to have their keys, well, they have the option to change them. And if they change their keys, then it's their responsibility and we can't recover it for them. Um, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. People can choose the level of security that they want for their keys, which uh, I think is makes it work really well, um, especially as compared to other blockchain projects that don't have that option. Um, so the next next big thing is delegation. Um, so a lot of you may have seen this uh, funky error message over here. I kind of wish it said something more helpful. Um, but you know, if you onboard new people, they probably won't have any hive or hive power, um, and they will need some in order to transact on the blockchain. If um, you know, we heard Block Trades and Howo talking earlier about the RC delegation pools, which will really really help this, and I'm very much looking forward to them. Uh, but in the meantime. Uh, Splinterlands automatically, every time uh, a player in Splinterlands submits a transaction to the blockchain, we check the response um, through the Splinterlands website. And if the if the transaction failed, then we'll check if it's because they're out of resource credits, and then we'll automatically delegate them some. Um, so we have this whole automatic delegation system set up, and then we also have a system that will undelegate from people who haven't been active uh, in a certain amount of time. So again, that's that's another thing. Um, that makes Hive blockchain, you know, better than a lot of other solutions in that you can play and be active um, without having to pay gas fees or invest in the platform and the apps that you're using can help um, basically support your ability to use the platform. Um, and if resource credit pools get implemented, that'll be even much, much better. Um, so a, a, another thing I want to talk about is verifiable results. So that's kind of one of the main purposes of building an app or a game on a blockchain is that, you know, you can verify everything that happens is correct, you know, based on the published protocol. And, you know, there's, it's not like if you open a, a Hearthstone pack, you don't know how those cards were really generated. This is something I'm surprised that like most other blockchain based games don't really like, they say they have verifiable results, but I have no idea how to actually verify them, um, which which is kind of weird. Um, but so on Hive, it's super easy. So if you open a pack of cards, which is what this screen's showing in Splinterlands, there's a link here that you can click um, that literally just shows you all the blockchain data and allows you to run the actual code based on the blockchain data to, um, to see what you would have gotten. One cool thing you can do with that actually is you can just change the data a little bit. Like, oh, if my transaction ID had a two at the end instead of a one, would I have gotten a legendary card or, or something like that? So you can kind of see what would have happened if you like waited for one more block or something to, to open your pack, um, which is pretty neat. But in general, uh, the point is that, you know, the Hive makes it really easy to to not only do these things like have verifiable um, results in, in games and apps, but it's also really easy for anyone to independently actually see that and, and view the data and know what's going on, which is important. Um, so that's kind of all I have because we have a, a very limited amount of time. Um, uh, it's up to Roland, I guess, if I have time for questions, but otherwise, you know, I'm always available uh, on Discord or or Hive or, or whatever. Uh. So Roland, see he here. All right, well, while I'm waiting for Roland, I also just want to mention that we are, um, Splinterlands is currently doing our final land sale. Um, so we have a new expansion to the game that's going to include uh, land that you can purchase um, and will allow you to actually mint new cards that we're adding to the game. And uh, so the, the last amount uh, pre-sale for the land starts tomorrow, Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, and that's your last chance to get the land at a discounted price um, before it goes live. So if anyone's interested in that, please check it out at splinterlands.com. Oh, there you are, Roland. Yes, is this a is an event here happening? What's up? Huh? What's this? 
Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All good. Okay. What's this? What are these people doing here? Oh. I didn't know how to do to see if anyone was asking questions. Oh, yeah. So we can uh, do uh, two questions. Uh, yeah, I, I know how to do it. I just learned it. There you go. On the bottom right, you see raise hand feature. Click to raise your hand. One minute ago, Azircon wants to ask a question. Azircon, you can ask a question right now. All right. Uh, hey, Matt. Uh, just a, a uh, hi there. So, just a detail oriented question uh, here. So, as you know, I, I, I've been playing this game for a, for a while. And uh, one of the things I've noticed lately, um, uh, there are a lot of tournaments uh, that you guys are sponsoring. And the prize money uh, in terms of DC is, uh, you know, quite substantial on the, on the tournaments. But the problem with that kind of reward system is uh, there is a specific group of, let's say, you know, 30 to 50 people uh, who actually gets most of those DC, which is a very substantial amount. And uh, the reward system for the general game, non-tournament game, is actually much lower if you, if you uh, consider the monetary value in terms of DC. So is there any uh, readjustment on the reward system you can, you can consider so that more average people can get uh, you know, rewards? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good and, like you said, very specific question. Um, so one thing is we've recently added a whole bunch of new tournament features for how we can set them up to also like limit the tournaments for certain groups of players better. So we could have like a, you know, players who are above a certain league can't enter a certain tournament. So it'll give, um, you know, lower ranked players uh, more opportunity to win prizes. Um, so in general, we're always trying to, to work it in a way that we can spread the prizes around more, although it is, it is difficult. Um, I, I'm not sure we're, so we have specific tournament prize pools that we have guaranteed based on like sales from our Kickstarter and stuff like that. So, um, you know, that, that's why we're, we're keeping, keeping those levels because we've guaranteed that, but I think we're always looking for more new ways, um, to add rewards just in general to the game. And that also comes with, you know, if we are giving out more dark energy crystals, there also has to be new features that, that allow people to spend dark energy crystals. And we have a lot of those, coming out over the next, you know, six months to a year. Um, and then at that point, we'll be able to also add more rewards to offset those. So it's, it's definitely a good point and something where we're always looking at. All right. Thank you so much. And, okay. you know, one more comment, and this is not on you, but more to Roland. Actually, is there anything on the screen? Because I see just a white screen. Is there supposed to be a presentation on the screen? No, it's just for people uh, who don't play Splinterlands. They can only see the presentation. So, <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> bad jokes. No. I mean, so we we are dealing here with uh, how do you say cutting edge technology, and you are too far off, man. Your screen resolution is 100 hertz. And now, if you re-enter, if there is something wrong, try and do a simple fix. Most of the time, is re-entering a room. What you guys also saw maybe is that when you try to re-enter the main stage, you get this dialogue box in front of you, which says, hey, friend X is in this room and friend Y is in this room. Which room do you want to join? This is the way how they split uh, and deal with the amount of connections in one event. Um, so if you have any issues, just try re-enter via general menu, general and re-entry. Uh, maybe that fixes it and on the live stream I did confirm and saw a Splinterlands presentation beautifully designed as the game itself is so um, uh, you can always look back at the presentation uh, in due time but uh, hey first let's go to uh, the next speaker and not yeah. without giving a round of applause to Matt thanks a lot man and don't forget to shave I'll Cheers. Try. Thank you, Roland. 